place les invités qui viennent en ville. Ici, on fait aussi des bébés en, en sa place euh, par euh, Thaïlande. Et donc, la stratégie, il y a aussi la stratégie de beaucoup de seconde, ça c'est plus un challenge. Et je vais rester près du micro en plus. So, uh, thank you very much for having me here. And now, after hearing the two speakers before me talk about the very important principles of net neutrality, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Dutch road to net neutrality, how we try to uh, have it in, in, in practical and implement it in the Dutch law, in the telecommunications law. Well, first of all, let me tell you something about bits of freedom. Okay, this is another one. We're just the five of us in, uh, in Amsterdam working together on a daily basis, but we're much more than that. We've got hundreds of supporters, of volunteers, um, helping us with every step of our way. So this could be absolutely experts on, on the IT issues or on legal issues. Um, so together we form this movement, Bits of Freedom, which is much more than just an organization. Um, The thing, the, the, the reason of being, the raison d'être of Bits of Freedom is because we really believe in the new amazing possibilities that new technology gave us. Um, of course, I don't have to explain this to you. Um, but we see the frightening possibilities as well. And we want to fight the latter to defend the first. Um, so net neutrality is one of our issues, but we have many more cybersecurity Uh, cookies, social networks, and so forth. Well, what we do is very simple. We defend two civil rights on the internet. The freedom of communications and the right to privacy. And um, it's very simple. Our focus, our, our perspective, is always that of the internet user. So everything we do is from the perspective of, of the internet user. And this is a luxury because it means we're totally independent of, uh, of companies or of political or, or, or party politics. Um, so if we want to achieve change, how do we do it? Well, not in the, in the uh, tradition of the French Revolution or, or the Cuban, but we have, as Jeremy said, we use the means of this maybe still global internet to def defend the global internet. With all our fans, our supporters, we try to uh, get all the expertise together and translate this. We translate it back to the community, but we translate it to policymakers as well, um, and do it this by, by lobbying or by campaigning. So that's what, just a few minutes about our uh, organization or our movement, uh, so you have a bit of an idea where we come from. So this Dutch road to net neutrality, how was it? Uh, uh, how was it? How was the journey? Well, it all began um, almost two years ago when our government fell. And this happened overnight, I think at five, six o'clock in the morning. And we called each other and we said, this is our moment. This is our time to achieve change in, in the Netherlands. Because we knew that these men and women were going to have election campaigns. And this is when we make promises. So with our community, we wrote the, a manifesto for digital freedom, which had several points in it, but one of the points was net neutrality. And then we asked all our supporters to go to their political party, their representative, and ask them to support net neutrality or the other points in the manifesto. Either way, they wanted to do it. If, if they would go to, to conferences or just tweet them, uh, we would let them know that these points were important to them. And um, well, this worked because the some points of the manifesto were taking over in the election programs. Um, and then at the end, three points of this manifesto were taken over in the government agreement, which was a, a huge success, of course. But 
the only thing that even came close to net neutrality was this one sentence, the government uh, stimulates a free and open internet. That's it. That's not nearly enough. So, uh, foreseeing the fact that telecommunications law was going to uh, be amended due to the uh, telecom packages, we knew that we had to explain the issue, the principle, to a broader public. Not only to the, 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 the niche that is already very interested in this issue. What does net neutrality mean to you? So every time we spoke with journalists, we spoke uh, in conferences, we spoke to, to, to people who would come to our offices, we would explain it and we would test our arguments because there are so many to give and they're all more or less valuable. valuable. So we tried the uh, all bits are created equal argument, um, the one that talks about discrimination or maybe even social cohesion. Would uh, the end of social cohesion on the internet if uh, one would get another internet than another. We would have the, the censorship argument uh, and of course the, the financial argument, maybe the, the consumer interest argument. We tried them all but it would still stay a very theoretical debate. And then there was this one big game changer. At a uh, uh, conference in London for uh, investors, a CEO of KPN, this is one of the, this is the biggest uh, ISP in, in Holland, told a journalist, and this was all taped, so it was on video, told a journalist that he was so very proud that he could know what his his clients were doing on the internet because they were using deep packet inspection. And this was huge because this was the first time that a real big uh, ISP said out in the open that they were using deep packet inspection for these reasons. So we asked the Dutch internet user, go to your, go to your police station and make a criminal complaint. And this was, this was all over the news. We were called, like, our, my, I couldn't hang up the phone without having a new phone call because everybody wanted to know what was going on. And the nice thing about it was that KPN at that time had to explain why they wanted to do this, why they wanted to know that their users were WhatsApping, Skyping, pinging away. Um, uh, so this made it really big in the in, in public debate. And at that time, we would have, uh, uh, once I was in a train and I heard 16, 17-year-old girls in front of me talking about net neutrality. Well, that was terrific. So we had the public debate. Sorry about that. The public debate. But then, a few weeks later, there was the political debate. We made this website um, closer to The Hague, where our parliament is. And we ask people, once again, choose your representative, choose the way you want to reach that person, and say what you want to say about net neutrality. And we heard that the inboxes of the different political parties just were overfull, and they had to have interns responding to all the emails. Um, this is the text of the amendment. Um, I. Uh, I'm so proud of it that I just wanted to show you. Um, and maybe it's, it's uh, a base for the discussion we'll have later. Um, uh, so, as you can see, there's no difference between mobile internet and the rest. There is no uh, uh, managed services. It's a real, clear uh, text to say that uh, providers do not hinder or slow down applications and services. This is the basis. And then there are a few reasons why you, if, uh, that tell you that you can hinder or slow down. And the most important one is the first one. It's to minimize the effects of congestion. And the, the way 
we solved the problem in the Netherlands, the problem of the, the discussion about the congestion was whereby equal types of traffic should be treated equally. So this means that uh, uh, one peer-to-peer -peer bit cannot be treated otherwise than another one. Um, well, and there are other reasons, but I won't bother you. The funny thing is that we were talking about managed services, uh, about mobile internet, and all these reasons, but the one thing that got the most attention in the political debate was the, the filter discussion. The um, uh, religious parties in the Netherlands wanted to keep religious or ideological filters available. And in the end, uh, the reason, the, 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 the solution for it in law is it said, if you want to filter on these, on these bases, you don't want to have a judge judging the fact if the ideological motive is strong enough to filter it on the network itself. You should do it as close to the computer you want to filter it on. So these filters are still available, but on, on the computer or in the home of the user. Just to give you an idea, this amendment, this text that we talked about, was uh, promoted by all the parties in green, supported by all the parties in blue, so it has this huge majority in the, in the parliament, in the, what's called the second chamber in the Netherlands, and only two parties didn't vote for it. The religious party that was talking about the filters and the liberals. And this is really strange because the liberals were one of the parties that were actually campaigning on net neutrality in the first place. So they had lots and lots of uh, critique um, uh, when they voted against it. Their own members were saying that they were really, really sad to see their party going this way. Um, we're not done. That's clear. We have an iceberg. We, kept, we, we passed the first 10% that you can see uh, above sea level or above water level. We know that there's still 90% under the water level that we cannot see clearly yet. So just to give you an idea, how should the regulator be? What kind of policy should they have regulating this, this law? Um, what to do about congestion and, and which kinds of congestion, and then we're going to a really technical debate yet again. So this is when we ask our supporters in the Netherlands, and I want to ask you because, as we said before, this is a global issue and we need all the help from all different countries. We ask you to help and to act because we all want to defend our internet. Thank you so much.